Okay, so now we're gonna basically build out a simple model that is gonna illustrate the ideas that we just went over with words. Basically, we're gonna do with math what we just did with words. We're gonna play around with the model and we will see that adding trade, adding increasing returns of scale leads to concentration of people in a location. So we're gonna develop just a simple model that shows that. So we have two locations, a domestic area and a foreign area. So it's just two places, all right? And basically what concentration will look like in this model is people moving to one area. We're gonna have two goods or two sectors, agriculture, manufacturing. So we're gonna label agricultural goods A, manufacturing goods B. We're gonna have four workers, sorry, let's just say workers, with one unit of labor. So there's gonna be two workers in domestic, two workers in foreign. Labor will be L. Well, starts with starts with L, so it's L. But now we got a problem. We got land too. What are we gonna call this? We'll call it H. Right. Um, and so each place has one unit of land. Each worker starts off with uh, uh, each area starts off with two workers. So we got two workers home, two workers abroad. The utility for each worker, so this is like how well they're doing if you haven't encountered utility yet, determines, uh, is determined by how much they get of these goods. So there's an agricultural good, manufacturing good. So how much they get, more agriculture, more food, they feel better, more, you know, whatever this is, clothing, shoes, they feel better. So this is just, you know, the higher this number, the better they feel. Okay, we're gonna assume that everything is split equally. They produce it and then it's split equally Okay. All right. So how are things produced? And we have to, we have to write that down. The agricultural good is produced via, take your land, put it here. So each area has one of this. So let me get my annotation out. So we can rewrite this actually like this. A is equal to the minimum of L and one. Okay, so the way this works is if I put one worker working in agriculture, I get one of these. If I put two, I still get one. So it's taking the minimum of whatever these two numbers here. If I put no workers in agriculture, so this is a zero, I get zero out. So basically the most I can get is one since I only have one unit of land. So this is basically the way this model is working is like, okay, you have a fixed amount of land. It can only produce one and you got to put one worker to get that one out. Okay. Manufacturing. We have this, this exponent here. It's going to be greater than one. So basically the more I put here, the more labor I put here, the more efficient my manufacturing gets. So it is, it's increasing returns to scale. That's what IRS stands for. In this class, IRS stands for increasing return to scale. Okay, that determines how much of the manufacturing good I get. So I have two places. So let's just say, let's for instance, let's do let's do the exercise. I'm in I'm I'm in the home location. I got two workers. Let's put one of those workers in agriculture. So minimum, I'm going to put one there. So I'm going to get one of this agricultural good. Then I'll put the other worker in manufacturing. So we will have uh, one to the alpha. Oh, I don't have an alpha. There we go. One to the alpha. All right. One to anything is one. All right. So I'm going to get one of both these goods. I put, if I put one worker in manufacturing, one worker in agriculture, I'll get one and one. Then utility Remember, these goods are split evenly. So among the workers, one worker, each worker gets a half. Each worker gets a half. Okay, so that's how it would work if I put one in agriculture, one in manufacturing. All right. Okay, so the goods, yeah, I said the goods are distributed evenly amongst the population. So now let's play around with this model and figure out uh, what's, what's going to happen. So... We're going to let the workers move between the places. So we're going to let them say, all right, if, if over there it looks better, I'm going to go over, over to the either home or abroad. But for the sake, let's assume that, um, let's assume that both, um, both places, uh, uh, both, both, both places keep their two workers. Okay. So as I mentioned in this previous one, if we put one worker in agriculture, we're going to get 
one of that, one of that good, the agricultural good, and we're going to get one of the manufacturing good. What's each worker's utility? Remember what utility is? Utility here, and we're assuming beta is 0.5. So utility is A to the beta. Beta here is 0.5. So 0.5. And then we're multiplying that by how much the manufacturing good they get. And that's 1 minus beta, so it's 0.5 as well. Okay. So utility here is however much they get of the agricultural good raised to the 1 half. However much they get of the manufacturing good raised to the one half. So in this case, when I raise something to the one half, that is the same as taking the square root. All right. So if you forget that from math class. Okay. So in this first scenario where I put one worker in agriculture, one worker in manufacturing. So I get one of those split evenly. So each worker gets a half. So each worker's utility is one half. One half to the one half times one half to the one half is one half. Put it in your calculator if you don't uh, if you don't believe me. Okay, so in this scenario where I got two workers home, two workers abroad, in each place, one's working in agriculture, one's working in manufacturing. Every worker then has a utility of one half. Let's see if we can do better. Let's see if there's some allocation that does better. What if one of the work workers moves from home, uh, from ab abroad, foreign to home? Let's put them in the manufacturing sector because why would we put them in agriculture? If we put them in agriculture, we still have the same amount of agricultural good, one, because it's the minimum of the two values, minimum of one and how many workers are working in it. So if I put two, it's the minimum of two and one, so still one. Not gonna put them in agricultural, I'll put them in manufacturing. So now I have two workers in manufacturing, so my manufacturing output is two to the 1.1. Remember I defined alpha as 1.1, the manufacturing, this is the manufacturing function. Okay, so in terms of manufacturing goods, what do I get now as I get two to the 1.1, which is 2.14. So now I've upped the manufacturing. Here's the problem though. Now there's three workers in the location. So now everything has to be split three ways instead of two ways. So there's one agricultural good split three ways. There's 2.14 manufacturer good split three ways. If I put this into the utility function, each worker's utility. So this is each worker's utility. They get one third of the agricultural good and um, you know one third of this. Put that in there, the utility is 0.488. So the workers are not better off. So in this scenario, the best we can do is put four, sorry, put two abroad, two home, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the rules a bit to allow trade. So in this first, in the, the first version, you couldn't have trade between the places. Now we're gonna have trade between the places. And the way we're gonna say this works is everybody now splits everything evenly. We put it basically, what trade does, we're gonna make a big pie of whatever's produced and we're gonna split that four ways between the four workers. All right, but basically you would think about trade is now two economies are combined via trade. And we're just, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna say it gets split evenly. So now we're gonna take everything produced home, everything produced ab abroad, put it into one pot together and divide it by four, four total workers. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, this is how trade's gonna work. So when we add trade to the model, what we're saying is everything gets put together, divided four ways. Okay, with the evenly spread population, so we're gonna have two agricultural goods, one produced at home, one produced abroad. Two manufactured goods, one produced at home, one produced abroad. So we're gonna have two divided by four, that's how much agricultural good you get. Two divided by four, that's how manufactured good each worker gets. So one half to the one half times one half to the one half, one half. So that hasn't really changed our situation. Now we're gonna look at this situation. So what's different about this situation? Now we get access to two agricultural goods because we have the one that's produced at home and the one that's produced abroad. So now we have two agricultural goods. Now we have to split them four ways. Here we only had to split them three ways because we were just looking at the one location. Now we're taking both locations together. There's a guy working abroad in agriculture producing one, a guy working home producing one in agriculture. So we're gonna take those two 
we got to split them four ways, okay? Raise to the one half, that's how the utility function works. And then we take those manufacturing goods, which now we've produced more of. We've got to split them four ways. We don't, we don't have to split them three ways. We've got to split them four ways. Um, you put this in and this is what you get for the utility. So what we see here, once we allow trade, now this allocation is better. So now kind of putting more people in one location, putting three people in one location where that allows two people to work in manufacturing, all of a sudden, once we allow trade, now this looks a lot better. The people are better off in this version, okay? So we've allowed trade, we've gotten some concentration. If we go full concentration, actually they are worse off. If we move one worker, if we move all workers in one location, we'll have one in agriculture, three in manufacturing. This will be the utility. So that that one isn't quite as good as the previous uh, allocations. But we still moved from this allocation, two workers home, two workers abroad, to three workers in home, one worker abroad. Some concentration when we allow trade. Now, let's up the returns to scale. So the way we do this is increasing alpha. So we go back to our manufacturing formula, wherever it is. Here it is. So upping this alpha means upping the, incre the returns to scale. All right. So when we do that, well, the first allocation doesn't change because we only have one person in agriculture. So one to the power of two is still one. So this allocation hasn't changed. Let's go to this one. Now we're going to do three workers, uh, three workers home, three workers at home, one abroad. So we'll have the two agricultural goods, one produced at home, one produced abroad. Our manufacturing goods now will have two workers working in manufacturing, both those workers at, at home. That's now raised to the second power, not 1.1. Everything has to be split four ways because there's four workers. So we do this, we get 0.71. Now let's move another worker home. Let's take that worker out of the foreign agricultural sector, move them home, put them in manufacturing. So now we have one person in agriculture. So we get one agricultural good split four ways. Now we have three people in manufacturing, three to the second power. That has to be split four ways. But here we actually increase the utility more. So when we add trade, and when we add increasing returns to scale, what we see is more concentration. The people all coming to one uh, location, which is what we saw previously. So this is a simple model that has the features of what we've seen. Basically, we've done a toy model that when we adjust these parameters, spits out the result we see in the real world. When we have specialization, when we have increasing returns to scale, we get concentration, we get cities, people all living in the same area. Okay, so these are the two fundamental forces driving urbanization, driving people moving to cities. Trade, the ability of people to trade with one another and increasing returns to scale. Back to our fine city of Los Angeles. So why is LA in, in LA? Now I made a video, um, about this that I have assigned. It may seem like it's not made by me because I use my good friend Demorge as the as the narrator who has a much better voice than, than me. Um, but anyways, I made it kind of a history of of LA. LA, LA is kind of a quirky city because you have you do have but you do have both these things going on. It has some comparative advantages. Principally in terms of the film industry, it has the weather advantage. So the weather in LA is nice. You can film outside virtually year round. Um, so it has a comparative advantage in that sector. It has somewhat of a harbor. It doesn't have a good, as good a harbor, obviously, as San Diego or San Francisco, but it has some harbor um, that makes it good for, good for trading. Um, it, it, another big industry in LA is um, aerospace. Um, that kind of comes from, it had an initial advantage because Caltech was here. So it had a good university. Um, so these are LA's kind of comparative uh, advantages. Increasing returns to scale, of course, once you once industries get going here, we get increasing returns to scale in those sectors. Now, almost everything I just said could also be said about San Diego. And it's just kind of quirks of history that I cover in the video, basically uh, because of a bribe and because of Thomas Edison that uh, LA becomes uh, LA. But you'll, you'll have to watch the video to find out the full story. All right.
that should do it for uh, a second lecture.